So let's look at the third case, case three. Free final state condition at one, two is free, and x two at time two is equal to six. So it tells us the final time is two seconds. So we know tf is two seconds, but uh, x one at the tf is free. So to work on the Lagrangian formalism, we define the Lagrangian, like what we did before. Let's take another quick look. Like what we did here, we define the Lagrangian, which is L is equal to V plus this is the ds dt, these two terms together, plus lambda transpose times the constraint. And the constraint is also the dynamics equation, is written as f minus x dot. And you have these different terms. And we start here from the general form, and we did not make any assumptions on f11, f12. So this is why all these derivations that we have here also apply to other cases. So we did that, we find optimum control. This is, should be the same optimum control for all the other cases. And we work on the differential equations, the dynamics that is the same. And also this equation over here, we did not make any assumption. We carried F11 and F22. Now we get the differential equations. After we get the differential equations, we start to apply the boundary condition. So it means the differential equations are the same. The only thing that is different is the boundary condition. So we'll say the step one from one to three are the same, so we're not going to repeat. And a step four, we're going to apply the boundary conditions. So we're going to start from the step four, right? We're going to apply the boundary condition f11, f22, they are zeros, and x1 at 2 is a three. We'll start from the general form, and we'll see how to use the general form to generate the specific boundary conditions. And we already know tf is a fixed two. So it implies that delta tf is equal to zero, right? So the f we don't need to worry about the first term. And x1, 2 is free. So it means delta x1 is not zero. Delta x1 is not zero, it means partial L partial x1 dot at a time tf is equal to zero. So this is something that we need to take a look. And we need to apply uh, partial L, partial X1 dot. Let's see what we have. L function is this. Three terms. Uh, we need to take a partial derivative of these three terms with respect to X1 dot. So we know that V is not a function of X1 dot. We can skip that. And uh, S, partial S, partial X, X dot, plus a partial S, a partial T is equal to this. And this is a function of uh, X1 dot. And we need to have this. Uh, so the partial derivative of that with respect to x1 dot give us this coefficient. So we'll copy this over. This is at a time tf. And we'll continue finding other terms which are function of x1 dot. And the last term is over here. Last term, it is a function of x1 dot, right? So if we take a partial derivative of x1 dot, that'll give us negative lambda 1 at a time tf. That is equal to zero. So this is the boundary condition that we have. Let's see how we solve the problem. F11 is equal to zero, and we can further eliminate that term, and uh, we can get lambda one tf is equal to zero. So th this is case three. We have two initial conditions. Let's copy this over first, and we'll revise this to fit into case three. We define the time, the symbol tf. The first two are the same, and uh, x2 at a time 2 is equal to 6, x1 at a 2 is a 3, and a tf is equal to 2. And this one is a 3, and we're going to replace this equation by another uh, condition. And the other condition is, what do we find? Lambda 1 at a tf is equal to 0. Let's just, uh, just change the one that we had uh, up there. So subs s dot lambda 1 is equal to 0. So this is the last boundary condition. Then we can solve them. We do not have a tf anymore. Four, four equations with the four unknowns. We find C1, C2, C3, and we plot 20 points, and we define time t. Okay, everything looks fine. So let's see what we get. 
let's verify. So in this problem, we want to control from 1, 2 to eventually something free. I don't care about where it ends, um, but I want to act 2 at a time 2 is equal to 6. So we can see that it got to 6. So perfect. And this is free. It can be anywhere. And also it reached the final state at a time of 2 seconds, which is also good. So this is the result. Let's copy the result. Copy figure. And I put it into here. And this is the control. So let's look at Hamilton formalism, how we can solve this problem. The first few steps are the same. Uh, only the boundary conditions are different. So let's look at what we had in the Hamiltonian formalism. This is the Hamiltonian formalism that we did. We define that, find optimum control, find op hum optimal Hamiltonian, find the different equations. And everything after here is the same. So step 1 to 4 are the same. And step 5 is different. Step 1 to 4 are the same as test 1. And step 5, boundary conditions. And we're going to start from the general boundary conditions and we'll see what we can get. And in this case, TF is fixed, means the delta TF is equal to zero. And we do not need to care about the first term, and we only need to care about the second term. And since x2 at 2 is equal to a fixed number, we do not care about the delta x2f. We only need to care, care about the delta x1f. So it'll give us this expression for x1 and a lambda 1 is equal to zero. Let's see what s is, and we're going to take a partial s, a partial x1. So we define a, the function s here. Function s is equal to that. The partial s, the partial x1, we have these two will be cancelled by that two, but f1 and f11 and f22, they are zeros. So this is the f11 term, f22 term. They are zeros. I don't need to deal with that anymore. So what I left is a negative lambda 1 star is equal to 0 at the time tf. Remember, these are all evaluated at the time tf. So what did you find out? The same, right? So we just did it, and we find a lambda 1 tf from a Lagrangian formalism. Lambda 1 tf is equal to 0. Now, from Hamilton formalism, we find a lambda 1 tf is equal to 0 means if we put this into my lab, that will be exactly the same, right? So it means the result should be the same. So let's look at the last case. The last case is a lot more complex. The last case tells us that TF is free. But at the same time, X2 TF is on a trajectory next to 5T plus 15. Use the Lagrangian formalism, then the first three steps, and we define the Lagrangian, we find optimal control, and uh, we got a differential equations. Those are the same, so we do not need to handle that. So we will say step one, two, three are the same. And we work on step four. And step four are for the boundary conditions. And this is the general form for the boundary conditions. So x1 tf is equal to a constant number, it means delta x1 tf is equal to zero. I do not need to look at um, this for x1. But x2 tf is on the line. Delta xf will be equal to theta delta tf delta tf. Because, delta, because this lies on this. And uh, delta xf is equal to theta delta times delta tf. So when we plug that value in, we have a tf here, we also get another tf there. So it implies that we got two tf terms. Both of them are coefficient of a delta tf. So in that case, we need to um, rewrite the equation so that it can include both of two terms. We will have this term plus this times theta dot. This will be partial x2 times theta dot tf. Now we have these two terms that are served as a key feature for delta tf. And uh, the other term that we have is delta x1f. 
that x1 f is equal to zero so we do not need to worry about a partial l partial x1 dot this is why in this expression we do not have a partial l partial x1 dot we only have partial x2 dot so since we only have one term we do not need a transpose anymore so let's see what is the boundary condition is let's see if we have some result that we already got from previously tf is free uh, if tf is free we did one case which is the second case second case yeah we did it here so this is the first term at a tf so let's copy this over plus the partial l partial x2 dot times the theta dot tf theta dot tf is a uh, very straightforward and this is time duration of this will be negative five and negative five at a at a time tf is also negative five so that is a negative five times that let's see partial l partial x2 what is it, what is that the l has these three terms the first term is uh, not a function of x2 dot right we're trying to find a partial l partial x2 dot not a function of x2 dot the second term it is a function of x2 dot and the coefficient is f22 times that we got a one term and the last term the coefficient for uh, x2 dot is equal to negative lambda 2 and these are all evaluated at a time tf so that is tf tf and this is this is also tf and lambda 2 is also at a tf and this expression is equal to zero So let's, just, let's just summarize the boundary conditions. So we have the initial condition, which are the same. So let's just write it directly on the code. Let's copy uh, this case, because the TF is free, right? Copy this case two, and we'll put it in case four. So we put it in case four. T zero is equal to zero, and we define a symbol of uh, TF. And the equations, these are the boundary conditions are different. So the first two boundary conditions are the same. And the next boundary condition is x1 tf is equal to 4. x1 tf is equal to 4. It's also the same. The last boundary condition is x2 tf is on that. So sub to x2 tf is equal to negative 5 tf plus 15. And the, the next boundary condition is this. It's a pretty long form. Let's see uh, if we have everything. It's 0 0.5 x1 tf square plus 2 times x2 square plus 4 times u square plus lambda 1 times x2 plus lambda 2 times negative x1 plus 3u and uh, the, the next one is minus 5 after the whole thing minus 5 times and f22 in this case is 5 times 5 times x2 we need subs s dot x2 at a tf minus 2 minus lambda 2 at a tf is equal to 0 right so make sure that we didn't make any typos. So negative 5, f22 is equal to 5. We do not have f11, right? There's no f11. Okay. I think we got everything. Oh, we had a typo, looks like. Maybe it doesn't like me how I broke the line. Let's see, it will still complain. Um, so we got the answer, so the states, let's verify. So it will start from 1, 2, to something 4, and uh, this point will be on the line. How about we put the line on there and let's see if we get the, if the result is correct. If you want to plot another one, you can hold on and plot something else. And we'll plot another line, and this line is t, and uh, the other function is a negative 5t plus 15. So we can plot this by using a dash line. So you can either run the whole thing or just run this a little piece. That's fine. Uh, perfect. You found the line, right? So this is how we uh, solved the problem. Let's copy the results. 
So these are the states, and then let's also copy the control. Yeah, so this is how we solve this problem. Let's look at how we can use a Hamiltonian formalism or Pontryagin's minimum principle to solve the last case, case 4. And a step 1 to 4 are the same as the case what we had for case 1. We're not going to repeat that. So we're going to focus on the step 5, the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions will always start from this general form. Then it will be customized based on what's given for the final condition. The initial condition x0 is equal to 1, 2. Uh, from here, we will be able to have the two equations. Tf is free. And at the same time, x2 Tf lies on this trajectory. We know that uh, delta x2f is equal to theta dot plus delta tf. And the final conditions we have x1 tf is equal to 4, x2 tf is on the trajectory, which is equal to negative 5 tf plus 15. And at the same time, uh, from this general boundary condition, if we replace delta x2f by theta dot times delta tf, then we will have this equation, the coefficient for delta tf plus this term times the theta dot at a tf is equal to zero. Let's see, we, we should have already defined h star plus partial s partial t. Let's find that term. You see in the second case. And h star plus partial s partial t is uh, here plus theta dot in this problem is negative 5 times partial s partial x2 minus lambda 2 at the tf. Let's see what a partial s partial x2 is. So we already know that a s function is this. Partial s partial x2 that give us f22 times x2 minus 2 minus lambda 2 and that is equal to 0. Let's compare this equation with what we had from the Lagrangian method. I'm going to copy this over so that it can have a good comparison. This term is the same, and this term is the same. Here we missed the tf. Plus lambda 2, this term is the same, and last term is also the same. So we find that from the two different methods, we get the same boundary conditions. At the same time, the uh, differential equations are exactly the same and we should get this, the same result. And let's copy the result and put it over here. All right, uh, we have completed this whole problem. It took us a while. It give us a very good practice about how to solve this optimal control problem under various boundary conditions.